semifinals against Pittsburgh, Ben Yacht battled the conditions and really took on more responsibility. Yeah, the Great Duck leadership preached this philosophy of next man up, you know, filling the roles of the injured players, but Ben Yacht stepped up more than any other Great Duck team member in that performance. He was explosive on the turnover, wise with his decisions with the disc, just a challenging deep threat for anyone to deal with. Ben Yacht will need to have another big game today. It'll be fun to watch him, likely matched up with Milan Ravenel for Harvard. And Soham Shah was so important last night, as was Wyatt Meckler in a game that didn't end until after midnight here on the East Coast, Minnesota has the energy, I'm sure, that they're in the championship game after all. And one of these two teams will experience history here in Raleigh today. Harvard Redline and Minnesota Grey Duck battle for a title next. The 2016 USA Ultimate College Championships are presented by Discraft Ultrastar, the official disc of USA Ultimate. Discraft Ultrastar, now available at over 1,900 U.S. retail locations, including all Dick Sporting Goods and Hibbit stores. By Five Ultimate, apparel made specifically for Ultimate players by Ultimate players. Visit FiveUltimate.com for everything from Discraft Ultra Stars to jerseys, shorts, and custom team uniforms. And by USA Ultimate, the national governing body for the sport of Ultimate in the United States. For more information or to find out where to play in your area, visit USAUltimate.org. Starting lineups for the Harvard Red Line, Stubbs, Hahn, the 29-year-old David Reshef, a grad student who played baseball at MIT in his final year of eligibility, with Milan Ravenel, a young explosive cutter. Thurm, Sharfstein, and Vandenberg, so crucial in the handling core for head coach Michael McKenzie. Minnesota led by Talis Boyd, a former Grey Duck himself, Josh Kautz, Ben Yacht, Isaac Ruff, Tony Paletto, Yacht and Ruff, both 6'4 or taller. We'll see how Harvard can match up. And Meckler and Shaw, along with Kaminsky, Ian, were so crucial yesterday without Ryan Oscar, who Talis Boyd said was the, the heart and soul of the team, the guy that makes them tick. He's going to try to give it a go today. Harvard did not finish first in their pool, nor did they finish second. They were 2-2 two and two, and in third, but they knocked off Oregon, a finalist a year ago in the champ in the uh, pre-quarters, and then on Universe Point, Reshef got the D that led to the break, the only break of the second half against Georgia. In the semis, another tight game. Harvard has made a habit of winning these elimination games in crunch time. Minnesota, similarly, third in their pool. Losing to Pittsburgh and losing to Auburn. A two-point loss to Ensabiner and a universe point loss to Itos. Auburn won their pool but was knocked off by UNC. It's just been a wacky weekend here in Raleigh, but they knocked off the number one seed UMass in the pre-quarters. Jeff Babbitt was banged up. Cole Wallen got hurt, making an incredible acrobatic D in that game. Dislocated his elbow in the process. Mama Bird, team with a championship pedigree in Pittsburgh as well, vanquished by Minnesota. Here's what you need to know. It's seven on seven. First to 15 wins. Halftime, once you get to eight goals and the disc thrown in any direction, you set a pivot foot as soon as you receive it. You have 10 seconds to get rid of it. It's a self-officiated game. Observers will settle disputes. No one expected it. Enthusiasm not diminished at all, though. Ian Toner, what will you be looking for in the opening few points of this game? I want to see how fresh the Harvard Stars appear, and I want to see how Minnesota's depth matches up against those top Harvard pieces of talent. Harvard in the white, and there's Reshef, the initiation cutter. John Stubbs with his first touch. Stubbs was superhuman against North Carolina. Darkside threw a lot of different matchups at him, and Stubbs continued to do what he wanted. I think they called a stall. My ruling is no stall, the count is fast. Just gonna stay in there. It's great to have the observers mic'd up. Gives us a 
window into the sport that you rarely see. This is Sharpstein. Vandenberg. Low flick. Stayed up. Jonah Hahn back to Vandenberg to Sharpstein. Shaw's on Sharpstein. Connor Anderson chasing Stubbs and up the line, a little push pass. And Minnesota's defender a little shaken up. That's Swarov Duby. He gets up, Harvard on the board. Nothing too unorthodox here from the red line offense, just a bunch of attacking strike cuts and small spaces. Interesting to keep an eye on the matchups for Vandenberg and Stubbs. I imagine Talis Boyd will keep throwing a different person out there until he likes something. Anderson giving chase to Stubbs there, but Stubbs, I think, has a, a quickness and a height advantage in that matchup. In the semifinals yesterday, John Stubbs was involved in every single Harvard score in the first half. He had three goals and five assists at the break. He thought Clay Thompson had a big game the other night. Realistically, if this game stays close, do you think John Stubbs will get any points off? I think the weather conditions, given how oppressively humid it is, will make it challenging for Stubbs to be absolutely effective for every single point if he doesn't take a point off. Here's Minnesota's offense. Ryan Oscar is out there for Gray Duck. And there's Oscar, number one. A captain, suffered a knee injury. Kept him out of the semifinal. Borrowing a knee brace from some friends of his on the Auburn team. Says something about the ultimate community. They're eliminated, who needs my knee brace? This is Meckler. Showed great composure yesterday. Oscar. Was he in? Paletta was straddling there. A lot of traffic on that near sideline, but they squeeze it through. Oscar beats Ravenel. And we're even at one. You know, he didn't really need to open up and turn on the Jets or chase anybody down, get up to full speed, but even if Oscar's not at 100%, it looks like he can be a useful piece of this offense in this game to move pretty well there. And there's so many different factors that, you know, the knee injury could impact. Obviously the straight line speed, but perhaps more importantly, the changing of directions and your quickness in these tight spaces. So Osgar. Grey Ducks Callahan nominee speaking there with Ben Yacht. Yeah, Oscar you know, didn't play much ultimate in high school. He was a basketball player, threw around in a church group he was in, started playing frisbee you know, basically the last year and a half of high school. And you know, he applied to two schools, University of Minnesota, University of Wisconsin in Madison. He said ultimate was a huge factor. He wanted to play high level ultimate, University of Minnesota. Was the choice staying in his home state? Vandenberg. Stubbs again being chased by Connor Anderson. And it looks like Shaw has the Vandenberg matchup as well. Reshef chased by Zach Trosvik. Big layout bid, unsuccessful. Sharpstein airs it out. 
Stubbs versus Anderson, but help coming, and the help does the job. Neil Peterson flying in for the D. That throw definitely hung quite a bit more than Sharpstein may have wanted. If it wasn't for the other Minnesota defender peeling off and coming in, I think Stubbs did have position on Anderson. And a couple aggressive bids in these first few points. The last two bids I've seen, the only possible landing place has been in the receiver's back or hip. So we appreciate the intensity, but not at the risk of injuring any of these young athletes. There's a drop. Alex Jurley had a couple big plays for the Minnesota D-line yesterday. Vandenberg, his angle to Stubbs was cut off. It was a great active mark by Shaw and good dump defense from Anderson that made that difficult. Now it's Stubbs. Vandenberg. Up the line, hanging, Reshef in the end zone. Stayed in bounds, made the catch. You don't usually talk about patience from a receiver when the disc is in the air, but he sized it up perfectly in this situation. And Vandenberg's thanking his lucky stars that that actually worked out. As we were watching this trajectory, I was pretty sure that this was gonna sail out of bounds. The Minnesota defender tries to attack very early. And the breeze helping both Reshef and Vandenberg out, keeping the throw inbounds. And Harvard holds to go up 2-1. On serve through three points. Reshef, baseball player at MIT, in his fifth year with the Harvard program as a grad student. And there's Mark Vandenberg. More assists than anyone in the division. You can see what Ryan Oscar has meant to Minnesota as well. And you look at that stat line and factor in that Oscar didn't even play in the semifinals. And John Stubbs. 20 to pull, gentlemen, no offsides. You know, so often, Ian, what? the deepest teams survive. But at this year's Nationals, we've seen a few sparkling individual performances, or maybe two-man performances, carrying their teams. Right, and I think we have two great examples at opposite ends of the spectrum here. Now, on a day when Steph and Clay will battle Russ and KD, Yacht to the end zone. Yacht and Oscar versus Stubbs and Vandenberg. It's not that simple. Minnesota has a Draymond and Harvard has an Adams, but it's that kind of heavyweight clash. And a great bid there by the Harvard hey, defender, but say, the yacht after he hit the ground, he was completely out of position. And I would expect Isaac Ruff to Deliver that throw perfectly every time when he has that much time and space to size up his throw. You know, Ben Yacht was fairly well known before this weekend, but for those who weren't familiar with the Minnesota big man, this weekend has been an opportunity to see him on the big stage and, and see what the hype is really about. He shouldered more of the load as more and more have his teammates have gone down to injury. And he seems to be doing it with a fair amount of confidence along the way. Just in his second year with the Minnesota program, transferring in from community college. Neither of these programs had ever been to a semifinal before. Obviously the first championship game for both Redline and Grey Duck. 
Stubbs to Ravenel, he dropped it. An opportunity for Soham Shah, Wyatt Meckler in the Minnesota D-line. Anderson, I think, got free as a result of a pick. And I think Anderson's asking if, asking Stubbs if he really felt he had a play on it or if he could keep the disc in. Stubbs felt they were close enough at the moment of the pick that the disc must go back. Sharpstein on the mark of Meckler. Stubbs really staying tight with Anderson downfield. Meckler takes a Sharpstein backpack on the catch. Oh, Meckler had a lane. Held on to it. Shot to Anderson. Minnesota on the doorstep. And in for the game's first break. Connor Anderson to Soham Shah. Gray Duck up 3-2. Such a tough spot for that dump defender to be in. You have to follow that cut and respect the cut to the open side, but it's really easy for the receiver to do something like Shah did and just plant and give himself an easy inside lane. So there's just so much responsibility that that dump defender has in that upline scenario. Advantage naturally definitely going to the offense. And Shaw making the most of that. Soham Shaw a year ago was basically the center handler for the O-line. But at a tournament Early this season, Minnesota's D-line was really struggling converting its turnovers into breaks. And in the middle of that tournament, they made a change and, and put Soham Shah on the D-line because he's an excellent man-on-man -man defender. And he also has shown an ability to quarterback that D-line. And last night, he was forced to play more offense with Oscar being out. But when they have their whole cast of healthy guys, the story of the 2016 Grey Duck has been Shah's leadership of the D-line. Yeah, Shah's been versatile, doing anything the team asks of him. Excited to see him keep taking this Vandenberg matchup as the game goes on. Again, Stubbs with Anderson on him. Ravenel. Stub showing confidence, going right back to him after he dropped it on the last possession. Stubbs coming under. 15 yards out. Lefty backhand to Vandenberg. And a call. We're good. So often last night in that semifinal against North Carolina dark side, this is where we would see Vandenberg and Stubbs just play two-man dominator in this small corner, perhaps get Sharpstein or one other player involved. Big lay out there. And again, the only place you're gonna land there is someone's hips or someone's knees. I'm not a fan of that bit at all. Reshef with his first touch of the possession. Stubbs to space. Reshef just shy of the goal line. Oh, and Stubbs burned Anderson up the line. It's amazing that John Stubbs still has the gas in his tank for that first at the end of a long point. And let's see him throw here and probably just perhaps lull Anderson to sleep for a split second before he takes off. The split second, all it takes. I, I bet you, uh, when you Chris Sunquist gets that deep. And you can see Bunk as Stubbs deep. comes into frame, Bunk Anderson Bunk isn't even deep. within 
a few paces. So Harvard holds, Minnesota still up the break. And it looks like Stubbs is going to take one. So he played the first six and, uh, points. Jesse, a goal and an assist. Just an invaluable presence. Lots of Harvard alumni have flown in, including Will Chen, who was great for Harvard. Played a year at Stanford as well. Saw him to the left of the screen there in the maroon. Former Harvard coach Josh McCarthy, now the leader of Boston Ironside in the club division. He flew in to see Red Line in the championship game. There's Will Chen. Now plays for Seattle Sockeye. You wonder if the wind is picking up as that was a subpar pull giving Gray Duck reasonable field position to start with. You can hear the flags rippling a little bit more than they have all weekend. It's a crosswind from the far side of the field to the near side. Rough to Oscar, center of the field. Yeah, the horizontal cut coming across the field, and now Meckler. And a pick call downfield. Rough should keep the disc. Anytime you're ready, gentlemen. And there you can see the flags rippling in the wind. Ruff was determined to throw that score, and finally Paletto broke free. That's the second time we've seen Minnesota go to that soft inside shot in a red zone or goal line situation. Ruff certainly sized it up. You see Paletto working back and forth, taking his cut out to that far lane in the fourth side and ultimately setting up enough space for him to come back for that quick inside gut shot. Harvard takes their first timeout. Timeout Harvard. They're down a break. Tony Paletto, the junior from Illinois, involved in the offensive effort. And then let's force him back into the four side trust or break side. Trust your mark to hold. Cool. Trust your mark to hold. Cool. Offense looks fine. Let's keep working hard. Let's see if we can't get off that side. Okay, right. Bouncing it down that same, you know, same section. Right. Let's go. Let's, let's go. go. Ready? 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 Let's just play Frisbee, the message from the Harvard leadership. There's Tristan Vandy Mortel, who appeared to tweak a hamstring in the semifinals against Pittsburgh and not moving well on the sidelines. Don't think we'll see him in this championship game. He has been relegated to cheerleader on the sideline. But as we've seen all weekend long, Quack. Quack. that hasn't phased this great dunk Quack. roster. Quack. Even if their what? Callahan nominee what? goes down. On the, pole for Gray Duck. the next player steps up and fills a role as Gray Duck pulls. Sharfstein to Stubbs back on the field. Anderson taking that matchup once again. 
Stubbs in a tight space. Sharfstein forced the throw. You saw him point to his chest and take responsibility there. I wonder if he thought Stubbs was going to plant and make a sharper cut right back at the disc in that small space. Great leaping catch. Neil Peterson fires up line. Sharfstein nearly got it back, but it floated for Meckler and right off the chest of Anderson. Tough break for Anderson. We actually saw one of those in the semifinals last night. It's almost as if he wasn't expecting that disc to come. Cutting behind the mark. He just can't reel it in. That was a chance for another break for Gray Duck. Stubbs had Resheth going. Went to Ravenel under. He'll rip it with a backhand. Ravenel to Resheth. Those are two of the complimentary guys we talked about needing to step up, take some of the burden off the shoulders of Stubbs and Vandenberg. We haven't seen Ravenel do a lot with the disc. Stubbs is going to go back to him here and let's take a look at this release. Not the prettiest form you've ever seen, but it worked. Yeah, right in Russia's spread basket. A lot of arm in that throw. Milan Ravenel from Atlanta. Played a very little bit of ultimate before coming to Harvard, but primarily has grown as a player in his couple years in college. Just finished his sophomore year. And Reshef, the oldest player at College Nationals in 2016. Just shy of his 30th birthday. I wish I still had some eligibility. Wouldn't that be nice? I think we all do. Center to Meckler. Oscar, Ruff, Couts, and Yacht were downfield. There's Yacht. Here it comes, Ruff on the run. He's there. Haven't heard a lot from Ben Yacht in these last few points, but making a statement there with that beautiful shot to the far corner. If you thought Ben Yacht was just a deep target, you're mistaken. He can throw two. And that's not an easy throw. Cross field needs to go over the stack and make sure that Nobody poaching has a chance at it. We saw in the pit game, or excuse me, the UNC game, Ravenel stepped out into the lane and blocked a late huck. On, on, the, Harvard, game, on the game point. On Harvard's path to victory, yep. Isaac Ruff has been so valuable too. Another one of the Minnesota Towers. Yacht 6'6", six, six. Ruff 6'4". In the official rosters, Yacht is actually listed about 20 pounds thinner than Ruff. Two inches taller, 20 pounds thinner, if that's accurate. They probably all lost a little bit of weight this weekend under the sun here in Raleigh. Yeah, the conditions today not doing them any favors either. Minnesota pulling up a break. Here's Stubbs. Again, Anderson has that matchup. 
Wow. That camera sounds like we had an awful, awfully quick count there. Stubbs in the red zone. Oh, just past the outstretched arms of the laying out Peterson. Stubbs to Vandenberg. Evan, if we take a look at this replay, I think Paletto might even have gotten a finger on it. But there was just so much zip that it kept going. You're right, Paletto, not Peterson. Let's see. Oh, yeah. He Paletto, nicked it. Paletto got a finger on it, just not enough to disrupt the course or flight path of the disc. Whew. That's a precise throw from Stubbs, and lucky that it worked considering how close Paletto was to making a play. There's always some level of luck in games like this. How will the disc bounce? How will it soar? How will the wind impact its float? Second assist for Stubbs, who, by the way, is wearing a pair of cleats today that his brother George wore as a sophomore at Harvard. Well-worn cleats from the Stubbs family. There they are. Looks like they're barely held together by some duct tape there. They've seen a few miles. George and John never really got to be teammates together until they played Ironside a couple years ago. Yacht puts it up. Paletto being chased down. And the D for Harvard's Adam Ehrenberg. Ehrenberg's incredulous. Let's take a look. Ehrenberg closing. Paletto and both, they both go up at the same time. I, I want to hear what Paletto is claiming, but I guess that's moot now because there is no foul. We'll start with the check. Call back there as well. Okay. At the end of the play, where continuation ends. So the continuation end at the switch. Where the foul happened? No, because continuation happened. There you go. When you guys are ready, we'll start play here. Ehrenberg's D will stand for red line. So the D for Adam Ehrenberg, like Stubbs, a product of the Paideia School in Atlanta. This is huge for Harvard, a chance to get that break back. They want to punch it in on this possession. They need to be as efficient as possible to keep Vandenberg, Stubbs, Reshef, those key contributors fresh as Stubbs shoots deep. Ravenel in pursuit. Looks like Yacht might have been the one to knock that away. He and Ravenel going up at the same time. For Gray Duck. Meckler back to pick up. It might have even been Osgar. A couple of Gray Duck defenders underneath the disc. Osgar sends it for Yacht, who skies for the catch in the red zone. Low flick. And that will work. Isaac Ruff from Josh Kautz, Minnesota able to hold. That's heartbreaking for Harvard. They've got the disc with a chance to get back on serve and then within essentially three throws, Minnesota answers and comes away with the hold. Osgar doesn't look like anything has changed from what we saw of him Friday or Saturday. Are you seeing anything, any remnants of the knee injury? Not at this point. I'd like to see how well he can open it up downfield if he needed to be more agile in the cutting lanes, but 
He's filling the role the team needs right now. And they're not even using him in the backfield as much. They're using him as an initiation cutter downfield. So clearly he's feeling all right. Isaac Ruff, a strong first half. One of the most wild semifinal Sunday nights in the history of this tournament. With Minnesota and Pittsburgh not getting underway until just after 10.30 local time, a result of a couple long lightning delays, one before the game, the first semifinal between UNC and Harvard, and one during the first half when Harvard had just gotten a break to make it 6-5. It was right around this stage in the semis that Harvard got its first break to take a lead. Red line trailing by a break at the moment. Yeah, it seemed like the lightning delay gave Red Line a chance to recharge a little bit. They came out of that break with some more energy. Harvard. Moving the disc laterally. Vandenberg resets. James Thurm. Stubbs. Six all. If he doesn't turn on the burners and attack that and go up with his left hand. Neil Peterson's going to have a chance at making a play on this disc in the back of the end zone. Do you see Stubbs grab it? Peterson was closing the angle. Harvard Cutter's doing a nice job just leaving that open side open. Jonah Hahn with a nice assist. So Stubbs is going to take this defensive point to breathe. He's been involved in four of the first six red line scores. Right, I know, I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna say Rudy. Harvard as a program founded in the mid-70s. Consistent presence in New England since the 90s. They donned the name Red Line in the year 2000. This is the eighth trip to nationals in the last 12 years for Harvard. And they've never been an easy team to beat. You know, there's been a stigma about the Northeast over the years. UConn certainly had a, a, a strong performance this weekend coming from the Metro East, knocking off the top seed in their pool, UNC Wilmington. A decade ago, 11 years ago, Brown went to Nationals and won it all. Knocked off Josh Ackley and Bo Kittredge in the championship game. There's Yon up the line. One of the easiest points of the game for Minnesota. Just some simple four-side offense. People attacking from attacking right after they get rid of the disc. You see Yacht's going to give and just go. And Paletto sees the space. No one else is going to beat Yacht there. We've seen Tony Paletto make some really nice throws. Timeout call by Minnesota as they will look to try to break and take half at 7-6. And this is a smart timeout, right? You haven't used a single one yet. You got a chance to stack a line. Let your yachts, your mecklers. Let's go, 
Let them charge up and refresh as much as possible before this point. Well, one really interesting aspect of Harvard's run to the championship was their pre quarter final win over Oregon. Ego had only lost one game during its regular season, and it was to Harvard. Oregon lost to Colorado here at Nationals. But in the entire season, three losses for the Oregon men, two of them to this Harvard team. And I think despite the 10 seed, people around the ultimate community thought that Harvard's ceiling was high because of the ceiling of their top level players. Now the depth was the question. Yeah, not many duos have the wealth of experience that Stubbs and Vandenberg have already had in their career. But, you know, we've seen great duos win a national title. Tim Garrett and Kurt Gibson in 2006 for Florida. That was not the only right. good players on that team, but in the championship game especially, it was those two guys doing most of the work. More recently, Alex Thorne and Tyler DiGirolamo come to mind. Sure. Ravenel looking for Reshef. They connected once already. Once is good, twice is better. This is just so encouraging for the entire Red Line team because Vandenberg and Stubbs had to expend zero energy for that hold. That was all the role players doing the heavy lifting. Ravenel, who we hadn't seen uncork anything in the previous rounds, two for two on his deep shots today and Reshef speed separating him from the pack. This kid's just a sophomore. You can see the wind bobbing that disc just a touch. But the key to that throw, the stability, the tightness of the release, let's go into the Harvard huddle. Yeah. That's exactly what you expected him to say when he had the three bullet points of <laughs> advice for his team, right? I love that it wasn't complicated. Very simple. Yacht, Kautz, Osgar, Meckler, Paletto, Kaminsky. Getting some last minute advice from Talis Boyd. Now if Harvard could break here, we'll be back on serve, virtually tied at the half. Regardless of what happens here, Minnesota will be receiving the next two pulls because Harvard received at the start. Isaac Ruff also out there on this line. It's Ruff, Kautz, Oscar, and Yacht downfield. Meckler will pick it up. Tough break with that pull landing barely a yard out of bounds. Reshef on the mark. Vandenberg, the handler D, and it's Stubbs who's got the matchup of Yacht at this point.
Paletto and Vandenberg feet getting tangled. Vandenberg won't contest that foul. You like Stubbs taking on this yacht matchup, Ian? I do. I think I think he's got the ultimate IQ to not over pursue. I also think Ravenel could take it. Ravenel's on rough, who's 6'4. Osgar needs help. Meckler there for him. And the mark drops off there, but Meckler not able to take advantage and until. there he can. How do you see that unfold right there? You know, I saw the mark over pursue to an around fake. And then it looked like some of the Harvard defenders tried to coordinate a switch that just ended up not working out. And there's Meckler to Osgar. And ultimately, Sharstein just not prepared for Meckler to attack after he lines up in that dump set. Watch Meckler after he gets rid of the disc to Osgar. And he throws that little, and I wonder if that influenced Sharpstein's positioning at all, because you'll see Meckler is gonna stick out his left hand to try and signal, oh yeah, I'm open, throw it to me back. Yep, that, that's exactly what happened. You also gotta give credit to Paletto downfield for clearing that space. You know, if Paletto doesn't clear, that's not open. Tough point there for Sharpstein. Minnesota up a break at the half. It's 8-7. And Harvard coach Mike McKenzie joins us. You guys are neck and neck, down a break. Your thoughts on that first half, Mike? You know, I think both teams are working hard, cutting hard. Um, the wind hasn't affected play very much, which is great. Um, it's getting a little windy down here as the weather might blow in. Um, I think we need to see a little more pressure from our guys downfield and uh, really need to try and work to get off that sideline. It's uh, worked for us so far, but I think that's a dangerous game for us to be playing. Coach, you talk about the wind. You talk about needing to amplify the pressure. Can we expect any different, perhaps, zony defensive looks in the second half we'll be thinking about different stuff sure we'll see uh, we like our chances man-to-man -man, especially as the game wears on but you know giving some different looks is always good Mike over the past 24 hours have you heard from members of the Harvard ultimate community from many years ago yeah there's a alumni email list that's been had a lot of activity over it from people who played way back when a lot of names people would recognize like Zaslo um, it's been really great um, you know we hear from them throughout the year but I think this has really been a great event especially as we come up on our 40th anniversary as a club. And last thing, in the second half, where's the balance of keeping your stars on the field nonstop versus giving them a breather to enhance their play in the critical points? You know, we have one more half of ultimate left, and I know those guys will want to go. So we'll see how they go, and if they need a rest, we'll give it to them. Enjoy the final half of the season, Mike. Thanks, Evan. Mike McKenzie, the fifth-year head coach and Harvard Law School product. Minnesota Great Duck leading Harvard Red Line by a break at the half here in Raleigh. Minnesota Gray Duck in front of Harvard Red Line, 8-7. Gray Duck up a break. And a first half that featured a good amount of methodical offense. Not a lot of break chances for Harvard. They were 0 for 1 in that category. Minnesota got the early break to go up by one, but it hasn't just been Stubbs and Vandenberg, and I know you thought that was really important for Harvard coming in. Yeah, the supporting cast doing everything they can to step up here. Speaking of the supporting cast, Isaac Ruff delivering a phenomenal throw to Ben Yacht on the deep shot there, and Harvard, Harvard's Reshef has had a great half. Stubbs finding Ravenel underneath and then boosting it deep to Reshef, who has plenty of separation. And Ben Yacht flipping the script and returning the favor 
delivering to Osgar, excuse me, to Rough Deep. And Osgar battling through injury, playing turnover free ultimate in this Grey Duck offense. Stubbs using the space and Minnesota once again not afraid to attack that upline space either. Osgard and Meckler to take half 8 7. Talis Boyd, the head coach of Minnesota Grey Duck, joins us. Coach, before we get to that first half, let's talk about Ryan Osgar. When did you realize he could play today? Uh, he, uh, during warm ups, he kind of started loosening it up, see, seeing how it felt. Um, and after about two minutes, I kind of saw the look in his eye and knew he, he was a go. Um, so we're excited to have him back. We've seen a lot of Connor Anderson on John Stubbs, a lot of the same matchups throughout the half. You like how those guys are performing? Yeah, Connor's been doing great. He's he's uh, He's been a stud for us on D all year long. And um, in this moment, when we need him to guard one of the best players in the world, um, he's taking it well. You've been involved in this program for a long time. What will the message be to the guys as they take the field for their final half of the season? Uh, you know, it's about us. It's about us executing. Um, we've been talking all year about, about the process and about how if, if we execute our stuff, nobody can hang. Uh, that's held true most of the season. And, and then all weekend, it's been about choosing, choosing to work harder, choosing to go get that break, choosing to punch it in. So um, it's a choice. And, and the message to them is to go make that choice. Talis, final thing on the lighter side. Who's decision was it to have collars on the jerseys? <laughs> um, that was a captain, uh, captain's decision. They wanted to look classy, I guess. You guys look like a Premier League team. I'm sure that's the point. We're, we're doing what we can. Enjoy your final half of the season, Talis. Good luck. Thanks, guys. Talis Boyd, the head coach of Minnesota Grey Duck, his team up a break at the break. It has been a fantastic weekend at the beautiful WRAL Soccer Park. The men's championship comes down to the next half of ultimate. Here at the college championships for 2016 at the WRAL Soccer Park in Raleigh, North Carolina. The weather, despite ominous predictions, has held out by and large. We've got one half of ultimate left with Minnesota up by a break. Lots of different guys getting in on the act. We knew the stars would be important, but the supporting cast could be the difference makers down the stretch, Ian Toner. Yeah, both teams making the most of that supporting cast. Reshef with three goals for Harvard. Ravenel with two assists for Harvard. Looking at Minnesota, Osgar coming back from injury, getting himself on the scoring sheet. And Ruff with two goals, two assists, dishing and reeling him in, doing a great job for Gray Duck. You get the sense that Talis Boyd wasn't too surprised to see that look in Osgar's eye. He has been the pulse of the team for a long time. Harvard beat UNC by two. Minnesota snuck past Pittsburgh by one. Red line and Gray Duck, only one will be the champ. It was funny, here in the semifinals on Sunday night, it felt like both Harvard and Minnesota captured the hearts of the crowds. Harvard going against the home team UNC in one of those games, but the performances of Stubbs and Vandenberg and everyone on Gray Duck battling through the injuries. There's Cole Wallen with his dislocated elbow in a sling. An injury suffered against UMass and their pre-quarter win over the top seed. Ben Yacht and company knocked off Jeff Babbitt and Zoo Disc. Harvard pulling, trailing by one. And an interesting strategy to start the half. In the state of North Carolina, strategy that UNC has employed several times. Trapping them on the sideline to start, but Paletto quickly gets it to space and Kaminsky. What do you think of that maneuver to start the half? I think it would have been a lot more effective if Paletta wouldn't have gotten that second throw off all the way across the field. And all of a sudden, they're basically in the red zone already. Yacht. Marked by Alex Hem. Good to see him back after getting shaken up in a collision with Walker Matthews last night. And Minnesota has the two score lead. Largest of the game holding serve out of the half. 
So if they could have gotten the defense down a little faster and not allowed that centering throw, you would have liked the game plan, but they just didn't execute it. Yeah, you know, up until this point, Harvard's person defense has not, has only given them one break opportunity, so it's not like that's something that they should feel is overwhelmingly effective. I'd like to see them throw something different and just test the Minnesota offense and see how they respond. That being said, if Harvard's done their scouting. They know that Minnesota has been especially patient against zone looks, making light work of UMass's zone in particular in the pre-quarter finals. Meckler has scored the last two goals for Grey Duck. Kaminsky the assist. All season long, despite where they are now, Minnesota has not spent a lot of time talking about results. They talked about trying to build up to peak at nationals. We talked in the women's semifinal, the Stanford Superfly ladies had a similar mindset. By the way, Sam Kaminsky, who just threw that goal, is playing ultimate in eighth grade for high school coach Talis Boyd. Coaching him now five years later in college. Stubbs misjudged it, and then in the second effort, you gotta be kidding me. How did that happen? Zach Trostvig, one of the unsung hero man defenders as described by Ben Yacht after yesterday's semifinal win. Holy That's cow. gotta be one of the stranger and more unfortunate Max in history. He does a good job pressuring Stubbs' backside, making him go up and, did that go off his shoulder and back up in the air? I think off his head. Stubbs goes up, and it looks like his thumb gets inside the rim of the disc, and the disc makes a revolution around his thumb and gets launched back up into the air. And Stubbs is the first to feel his pain. Trosvig couldn't do that again if he tried. Well, I've heard it a million times before. We'll say it again. Catch your blocks. Feels like Trosvig should get the assist for that goal. Well, very close to being a turnover. Stubbs misjudged it ever so slightly. But Harford catches a huge break. With that said, they're still looking for their first defensive break. Osgard being chased by Stubbs this time. It's Vandenberg who's on yacht downfield. And rough marked by him. Kaminsky shoots it. That was beautiful. Josh Kautz. That's a freshman finding the senior. A couple of Minnesota kids connecting for the score. Kaminsky's margin was so small. You're going to see him look upfield, then turn to his dump. Nobody's there. Looking at the inside lane. Another look backfield, and then he realizes the count is high, and he's got no choice but to go back downfield. And that's a really difficult throw that he executed perfectly. We've seen a lot of these throws up the line to the same third not work out. What in your mind as a thrower is the most important thing about that look? I think the ability to read the wind and place the right, not only the right amount of angle, but also the right amount of touch on the throw as you're releasing it. Because, you know, you can get the angle right, but if you've got 
too much wind in your face or too much wind supporting you. That could either knock the disc to the ground earlier than you anticipate or carry it out the back of the end zone if you put too much on it. And Kaminsky showing his throwing prowess there. Minnesota five scores away. Still plenty of time before the soft cap, about 27 minutes until that becomes a factor. Stubbs continues to rush it. Vandenberg goes around. Thurm. And Jonah Hahn might have been freed up by a pick. Let's see. Looks like the pick was elsewhere. So Hahn will keep the disc. Ravenel downfield being marked by Yacht. There's some space on that sideline if he wants to make a cut. Blake Frantina on the mark. Ravenel back into the stack. Foul called. Disc was caught. They'll continue. <laughs> Sharfstein wanted to make sure that if that disc was turned over, Harvard would keep it. But looks like looks like Meckler kicked Sharfstein's hand, and he wasn't going to contest that call. Vandenberg marked by Shaw. Foot back. Stays with red line. Stubbs to the end zone. Vandenberg. Ron Stubbs to the end zone for Mark Vandenberg. And the red line score. A lot of trust throws That's between Stubbs and Vandenberg. Nine. They might be even with their defender. Stubbs eyes up. Vandenberg realizes Shaw isn't even and when taking you, stock of his surroundings. When you say trust throw, describe what you mean. Vandenberg isn't is barely making a cut. And he just kind of puts it to space, letting the throw dictate where Vandenberg is going to go. Kind of threw him open. Exactly. And for the last few years, Harvard's falls and Harvard's rise has largely been dependent upon that trust between Stubbs and Vandenberg. And the rest of the team, their belief collectively in those two guys and what they can do for the team. Harvard led this game 1 0 and then 2 1. But Minnesota got back to back scores 2 2 and 3 2. And Gray Duck has not trailed since. Another chapter in championship ultimate history at the college level unfolding before our eyes on this Memorial Day Monday in Raleigh, North Carolina. With Ian Toner, Evan Lepler, thrilled to have you with us on ESPN3 and ESPNU as Gray Duck and Redline, both schools seeking their first ever national title. Wyatt Meckler. He overthrew it, but it worked out. Isaac Ruff cleans up the trash. 
That was not the intended target, I don't believe. We saw we saw Osgar and Meckler sizing up those inside shots. You see Osgar pumping, and that actually forced Reshev to respond and allow Meckler to get open. And this shot sails over Kaminsky's head, but Isaac Ruff using his size in the end zone, following the disc. Not the way they drew it up, but a hold nonetheless for the Grey Duck offense. Isaac Ruff, a third score, also a couple assists for the 6-4 big man. And Sam Kaminsky, a very bright future ahead for the freshman. You know, Ian, a year ago, we saw a first-time winner in the men's college division when North Carolina took down Oregon. Dark side had never won before. The University of Colorado had won back in 2004 and then a decade later repeated behind Jimmy Mickle. Pittsburgh the couple years before that, but you know, prior to North Carolina last year, you really had to go back a long way to, to find a first time winner. You would have to gone back to 2001, or rather 2003 when Wisconsin won it for the first time. Hodags won two more titles in 07 and 08. And there was that you know, eight year stretch where only four schools won. Florida, Wisconsin, Carlton, and Pittsburgh each won two titles each from 2006 to 2013. Great to see some more parity around the division since then as Stubbs shoots deep. A little too far out of the reach of Han. When you look at the form on Hans bid, it, he looked like he was trying to roll over onto a shoulder rather than fully extend forward. I wonder if that limited his trajectory in getting a hand on the disc and Shaw is gonna call a timeout on the goal line. A little disagreement here about what the disc will, what stall the disc will come in on. Shaw takes timeout for Grey Duck. That's Minnesota's first timeout of the second half. You know, the margin in this game has just been so slim. Yep. Harvard 0 for 1 on break chances in the first half. Let's go. Great. And then we are all going to bring water, bring towels, do everything we can so we can get another one right afterwards. Yeah, right. Point, so point by point. Let's go. Is Ryan Osgar coming back on the field akin to Adam Banks standing there in the locker room with his wrist? Yeah, rotating the hockey twisting stick. Twisting the stick back and forth. Eerily similar with a parallel. Now, you mentioned how close this game has been and how small the margin has been. When these two teams met on March 19th, at College Easterns, it was not a very close margin. Minnesota won that game 15 to 8. Harvard has already outdone itself compared to that mid March performance, but I mean, two months have gone by, a lot has changed. And a first throw turnover after that break opportunity. Harvard picks up in the red zone. Vandenberg short to Stubbs, Anderson in his grill. Vandenberg looks and hits Stubbs right back to him. And if you watch Stubbs downfield, he never stops making his next cut. And he, Anderson goes to sleep there. I'm surprised Vandenberg couldn't squeeze a blade. Vandenberg finds Sharfstein. 
It was Minnesota's Swarov Duby who was exhausted chasing Sharpstein around there. And the red lines are. How many teams have we seen do that this weekend? Isolate one person in that upline space and then kind of give them a 10 by 10 box to run an ISO as we see Shaw try and find his first undercut a little too high for Anderson, a difficult grab. And then Sharfstein is gonna go up line and everyone maintains space and gives him that little corner box to work in. So challenging for Doobie to defend. Over commits to that inside lane. And Harvard is still within one. Redline still has both of its timeouts. The defensive point here. We'll have Adam Ehrenberg on the line. Jack Deschler, who hasn't played a ton. Andrew Brennan. Alex Hem. Andrew O'Rourke. Reshef to pull. And we're seeing a another junky zony look from the Harvard defense, just kind of sagging into the lanes, forcing as much horizontal and lateral disc movement as possible. Well, Minnesota's getting easy resets here primarily because of the sagging off into the lanes. Here's Oscar. And now it looks like Harvard starting to crumble into that one on one person defense. Poletto. Meckler couldn't shake free of O'Rourke. And a stoppage. Okay, so are we back on the one? Yeah. All right, we got a foul, we're on one. Foul called, no contest. Coming in on one. Paletto at the disc for Grey Duck. Was that a foul or was that a turnover? Oh, not really, he hits my knee. Are right, you coming to me or contest? Here's the set. It's whatever you want to do. All right, my ruling is it is a foul. You're in an illegal marking position. Will, go work, Will. The observer ruling that the mark was a bit too close. Nice inside shot there from Paletto. Not an easy throw. Osgar and Paletto. Number now. 10 running around in the backfield, looking like Dylan Freechild with that give and go action. Got the eye black too. Paletto to Meckler. Kaminsky from Paletto. Gray Duck by two. For Sam Kaminsky and the Gray Duck score. That's Minnesota 12, Harbor 10. Meckler with the assist. Paletto pivotal. You know, these inside breaks are just, they've been devastating. I wonder if the Harvard marks need to perhaps get a little flatter. And as soon as I say that, we see this clip of Paletto breaking the mark within a round throw. But especially in the red zone, that's been, those inside shots have been great ducks bread and butter.
We're about 13 minutes away from the soft cap going on. It may be a factor, it may not. This is the championship game in the men's division, the 2016 College National Championships. Harvard on offense. Center to Vandenberg. Again, Anderson on Stubbs downfield. Alex Jurley is on Reshef. Vandenberg to Ravenel. Stubbs. Anderson really out of position, letting that cross field throw go off, but Osgar with the heads up block. Little tunnel vision there from Stubbs. You didn't see the poach coming from behind, and Minnesota looking for a three score lead. Neil Peterson dishes it off and into the end zone. It's Blake Trantina. Largest lead of the day for Gray Duck. Heads up play here from Osgar. That cross field look is always so challenging. There's always someone lurking, someone following the play, coming in who might have a shot at it. And Osgar just doing all the work himself, getting the block, delivering the deep huck to the doorstep. I wish we counted hockey assists in uh, <laughs> Ultimate statistics. Oscar's knee looked just fine there. Yeah, absolutely. Peterson picks up the assist. Timeout called on the field. Teams will be a first time champion. Obviously, you know, Pittsburgh a few years ago in 2012 was a first time champ as well. I think the point I was trying to make a, a brand new team to the party. From this perspective, Minnesota has not been to this level before. And you look at all four teams in the semifinals, I believe some of the Ulti World reporters had pointed out that. All four, all four men's teams in the semifinals did not win their region this year. Harvard falling to UMass. Minnesota not emerging from the muck of the North Central Regional. Wilmington getting the better of North Carolina. And Case Western Reserve shocking the community and winning the Ohio Valley with Pittsburgh taking that second bid. None of the semifinalists won their pool either here at Nationals. It's all about peaking at the right time. But, you know, while there's been a lot of talk about the format at Club Nationals and how perhaps it needed to change, I'm not sure too many people would complain about the way this format has unfolded. A big underneath D there from Ben Yacht. The teams have been slotted the way they finished in pool play. Pool play was incredibly compelling despite the field getting turned upside down in bracket play. Tough throw from Reshef there. Perhaps the wind making it more challenging than he would have liked. Shaw lets it fly. A pack in the end zone. Ben Yacht elevates for the score. A superstar showing off his hops in the championship game, and Gray Duck is one point away. 
Two breaks in a row here for this great duck defensive unit. You know, I wonder if, I think Shaw was just trying to throw a shorter distance inside out pass and Yacht's gonna sky that pile more often than not. Yacht just above everybody. And Minnesota is one point away from being on top of the ultimate world. One more point. This is not a Disney movie about a ragtag group of Pee Wee hockey players. This is college nationals. And Minnesota is on the verge of a very special moment. Harvard can only get back one way, and that's one point at a time. Good defense from Blake Trantina downfield on Ravenel. Anderson preventing Stubbs from being open for the under. Finally, Reshef breaks free of Trosvig. There's Stubbs. Again, Stubbs in the red zone. And Stubbs continues to find a way to make plays. 14-11. He's not coming off the field the rest of this game. Ian Sharfstein running this dominator set here. Great touch on this throw from Sharfstein. Another similar situation. Almost throwing him open though. Stubbs did start to make that cut. Time out on the field. We're playing pretty good team. Right? We get some low ground shots. We're, we're still forcing them up. It's great. Right? Trust that process. Trust that system. Right? We'll get those turns. Okay. And again, let's put it in one. You know, so we're about one in right now. Everyone's tired. Everyone's tired. We gotta walk the other right there. And fight for it. Right? Zero, zero again. Go on. Yes, Fred. Right? Woo! Hey, let's Mike. use it. Let's go. I'm not tired. All right. I'm not tired. 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 I'
The Mighty Ducks, half Angels in the outfield. But Harvard's the one that needs the Angel in the outfield right now. They could use some help, that's for sure. Minnesota has the title on its racket. Meckler. Oscar. Looking for Yacht. Ben Yacht could not stay in bounds. Out of bounds on the deep look. Great turnover. And this might be Harvard's first chance to break in this half. Injury on the field. Aaron Berg stepping off the red line. Well, you always hope you can play the best game in the title game. Harvard has not broken Minnesota's O line yet. That would be a good time to start. Their backs against the wall. Looks like Ray Duck will stand back. Sharpstein finally gained an inch of space against Poletto. Foul call, no contest. Sharpstein with the disc. Poletto on the mark. Big call. We got a stall or is it good? Okay, we're coming in one. You guys all set? Uh, hey. a little discussing, right. still moving. Hey! Uh, time you're good. Hey, Minnesota has really forced Harvard to grind every point all the way. Not since Ravenel threw deep a couple times in the first half has Harvard had a deep shot. Every reset's been tough. Testament to the depth and caliber of that Grey Duck defense. Hem juggles but hangs on. Reshef. Vandenberg. Stubbs, Vandenberg, that was deflected and caught anyway. To the end zone, Vandenberg. First break of the game for Redline. So Redline has some great throwers. And I wouldn't underestimate their ability to throw something over the top. But you see how much and how far the Harvard stack is pushing back. If I'm one of these Grey Duck defenders, I'm realizing that this is just an isolating, isolated game. Perhaps I'm gonna take some chances and peel off my man in the stack and try and help out in some of that upline space. Second straight assist for Sharpstein. Ben Sharpstein, the senior from Brookline. Complimenting Vandenberg and Stubbs. Now it's interesting here, Minnesota just had a championship point. Their top seven O-line on the field. How many of those guys stay out there? We'll see. Paletto, Oscar, Kautz, Yacht, Meckler, Kaminsky, and Ruff. It's the same line. That's faith in your offense.
Vandenberg out there with O'Rourke. Reshef. Stubbs on the pole. And offsides was called. First of the game. No substantive penalty until the second offsides. This would not be a good time for a second offsides. Minnesota had an excellent regular season. Gray Duck, 33 and 4 during the season. They finished second at Easterns. They won Huck Finn. They won Florida warm up. They won their sectional tournament. And then, in a very muddy, rainy, and miserable regional experience, Minnesota finished third behind Carlton and Wisconsin. But it was an interesting scene last night when many members of Carlton Cut in particular were the most vocal supporters. Looked like Harvard mixed up the defense here, didn't have the legs perhaps to go man. Counts for Osgar. Minnesota on the doorstep of a title. Paletto to the end zone. It's Osgar. Ryan Osgar, the goal, and Minnesota Grey Duck has won its first national championship. 15 12 over Harvard. I don't think the Grey Duck team knows what to do with themselves. Disbelief amidst the celebration. We saw the red line defense mix up the look here on the final point. The Grey Duck offense staying patient against this look as it has all weekend. Finally grinding up that fourth side. And Osgar, who missed the semifinal with a knee injury, finds the strength to play today. Beats Reshef to the cone for the game-winning score. And Minnesota Great Duck, a national champion for the first time in program history. Tony Poletto to Ryan Osgar for the games. Final goal. Bring it in one time. Wings up one last time. Holy shit. Hey, um, we have been talking since October about trusting our teammates, trusting our process. I have never been a part of a team that was more one team than this team. This was an amazing team tournament victory. You deserve this. We're national champions. Great <laughs> got three. One, two, three. Great Hey, let's go back to One duck, one love, one national title. University of Minnesota Grey Duck, it is not a dream. You are the national champions. The 2016 USA Ultimate College Championships are presented by Discraft Ultrastar, the official disc of USA Ultimate. Discraft Ultrastar, now available at over 1,900 U.S. retail locations, including all Dick's Sporting Goods and Hibbit stores. Buy Five Ultimate, apparel made specifically for Ultimate players by Ultimate players. Visit FiveUltimate.com for everything from Discraft Ultra Stars to jerseys, shorts, and custom team uniforms. And by USA Ultimate, the national governing body for the sport of Ultimate in the United States. 
For more information or to find out where to play in your area, visit usaultimate.org. Minnesota broke it open with a string of breaks. It was 14-10 after Ben Yacht made the discraft play of the game. I don't know that there's much Harvard can do about Ben Yacht's size. He used it to his advantage all weekend, not only in this game, but also against Pittsburgh. He is our Discraft play of the game focus. And Talis Boy, the head coach, congratulations, coach. Thanks. I imagine you're short on words, but you gave a, a pretty incredible speech hey, to your team. And look out. <laughs> Feel good? That does, it's cold. What, um, what, how did you guys put this national tournament run together? <laughs> um, it started back in October uh, when we came together as a team. Um, and we started, well, you know, it started a couple years ago, actually. We've been preaching about the process for a couple years now, um, focusing on that, executing our framework, our strategy. And we've been saying for three years the results will come. Uh, last year we took down in the regional tournament for the first time ever and <laughs> bigger stage this year. Yeah, you mentioned some of that past success. You guys have been knocking on the door, having Great results in the regular season, building in the series. What does finally securing this championship mean to your program? Uh, it means a lot. Obviously, you know, uh, we compete in a region with a bunch of teams that have done it before. We feel like we've been right there every year, um, and it just hasn't broke our way. And this year, from the beginning, felt special. Um, and we've, you know, we've been looking at this, whether officially as a team goal or unofficially, all season long. And for us to come together despite all the different things we had to go through this weekend uh, feels really good. It was a crazy tournament. You guys go two and two in pool play. You lose that universe point game to Auburn. If things had broken another way, perhaps you missed the championship bracket entirely. But Massachusetts, Colorado, Pittsburgh, Harvard, one after another. Heading into the pre-quarter round, what did you think would be the most important thing to win four games in a row? Trust in each other, um, trust in what we've been working on. It, you know, we say it a lot, but it, it means something, and I think we showed that today. Um, you know, we've had guys go down with injury. We've had uh, guys come back with injury, but um, we we'll want next man up, and we just keep grinding. Um, it was clearly a daunting road, but uh, we made it work. You're a national championship coach, Dallas. Congratulations. Thank you. The leader of Minnesota Gray Duck after a 15-12 victory. Ryan Oscar, the five ultimate spirited player of the game. He threw the winning score, or he caught the winning goal rather, threw the goal before that. Ryan Oscar did not even play in the semifinals after a knee injury kept him out, but he got loose before the game. Ryan, how'd you find it within yourself to play here today? Uh, just seeing my team working so hard yesterday with all the guys down, it really gave me the motivation. And also really taking like uh, eight ibuprofen this morning helped a lot. And I took like a two-hour two hour warm-up, that helped. How did the knee feel? Uh, it felt pretty good. Uh, it's really warm out, and yesterday it was just really stiff because we had like a 12-hour delay on our game. Sure. And so I got it going this morning with a long warm-up and the warm weather. It got it going, and I mean, it's a national championship I had to play. Ryan, which of your teammates impressed you the most this game? <laughs> Obviously, Ben Yacht, he comes, to, he's just, he's insane. He just catches everything. He's our, he's totally our release valve throughout the whole game. Ryan, from where you were with this program and where this program was when you got to the University of Minnesota, how do you compare where the program was then to where it is now? I think we've, we've developed a lot. We've really focused on commitment and uh, work ethic throughout the entire season, through the fall, through the spring, in practice especially. Outside of practice, we have required throwing every day. The level of intensity, especially in practices, has gone up every year I've been on this team. What are you going to do to celebrate? <laughs> Anything you can say on the air? <laughs> well, yeah, I'll probably go get a beer with my teammates who are 21, right? <laughs> you, have, you have a flight to catch tonight, or you get to enjoy the evening in North Carolina? Yeah, I've got a flight tonight at 8, so. I'm glad it didn't get rained out here, else I would have had to miss my flight probably. Well, you can take that gold medal with you through security and wear it on the plane. It'll feel really good. Congratulations, Ryan, an unbelievable accomplishment. Thank you so much. Ryan Oscar, the leader of Minnesota Grey Duck for the first time ever. Minnesota, the national champs, and in a region in which 
Wisconsin and Carlton have dominated the North Central. Minnesota proving that it's not just a two team region. Minnesota forever uh, a factor. Ian, your final thoughts on the weekend and Grey Ducks title. It's all about getting hot at the right time, peaking at the right time. Minnesota finding themselves up against adversity and winning the final four games they need to capture the championship. In the women's division, Stanford Superfly won it all. And in the men's, Minnesota Grey Duck. The third seed and the four seed. Seedings didn't really matter this weekend in Raleigh. That'll wrap up our championship coverage from the WRAL Soccer Park in the capital city of North Carolina. For Ian Toner, this is Evan Lepler. It has been our absolute pleasure to bring you the action all weekend long on ESPN3 and ESPNU. Final score, Minnesota 15, Harvard 12. To watch this entire game on replay, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. Congrats to Grey Duck, the national champs.